What's up, gang? Todd here. So what do you do if your marketing campaign, your funnel doesn't work? This is a question that I get asked all the time when folks will come in for a full day consult or half day consult, or they'll come into E5 Acquisition Accelerator and they'll say, hey, I designed a marketing campaign before a campaign, a funnel before following XYZ method, and it just didn't work. What do I do? Well, the reality is, is that we have to start with what do you mean by it didn't work? What does that mean exactly? We have to properly diagnose the problem before you can identify what the right solution is. And there's a lot of different elements that it could be. A lot of marketers, a lot of entrepreneurs, they want to jump in and immediately they want to change the offer or they, they think it's the idea or they think it's the headline, the way that they're expressing the idea, or maybe it's their leader, maybe it's their campaign argument, right? And they immediately want to jump in and start tinkering just because it didn't work. But what does it didn't work mean? Because it could be a lot of things. So let me give you an example. Let's say somebody says, well, it didn't work, meaning we spent a thousand bucks on ads and we only generated a hundred dollars back. And so we need to change the, uh, the offer, let's just say. The reality is, is that the offer may have absolutely nothing to do with it. Maybe the problem isn't marketing related at all. Maybe the problem has to do with the media side of things, meaning that maybe what you're paying on the media buying side, what you're paying to get a visitor is just cost prohibitive in terms of what your funnel can produce. If you're right, if you're spending ten dollars to get a visitor to your campaign and you're selling a twelve dollar product, well, great marketing or better marketing or fixing your headline or your idea isn't going to fix that problem. And so when diagnosing the situation or diagnosing the campaign and why it's not working, we always have to start at the beginning. Now, like in this example with, I spent a thousand bucks and I only made back a hundred. So right off the bat, we need to go to the media buying side of things. And we need to see whether the problem is on the media side or whether the problem is on the marketing side. Let me show you how we would do this. So we would start off by saying, well, let's look at the media side of things. And the first thing that we want to check is to see, are you targeting the right people? Because if you're targeting the wrong people and you're, let's say on Facebook, well, your click-through rate is going to be in the toilet. And because we're really paying based on a CPM, based on an impression basis, if your click-through rate is in the toilet, meaning the number of clicks that you're getting on your ad are a tiny percentage, well, what it's costing you to get a visitor to your campaign is going to be significantly higher than it could be or should be. Now, let's go on the assumption that you're targeting the right people. Well, now we need to check to see, uh, is the creative good, right? Is the idea, the copy that you're using to express the idea adequate enough to get a high level uh, of clicks, a good enough level of clicks to keep your cost per visitor down within the range where it should be? Now, if you're targeting the right people and you're getting a low click-through rate, right? We need to look at the creative. We need to look at the idea. We need to look at the copy. We're going to start there in terms of what it is that we test and what it is that we um, uh, 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 try in terms of optimization so that we can get your click-through rate where it needs to be so that our cost per visitor is within the right range. Now, let's go on the assumption here, just for example purposes, that you're targeting the right people and that your creative is good enough to get you a reasonable click-through rate. And now, now we then need to go over and look at your campaign. Now we have to look at the marketing side of things. And where do we begin? We begin with your first page. Let's say that you're using a traffic captivation page. So you are capturing the opt-in so that right, you're, you're, you're getting folks to opt-in before they get to your E5 campaign, your marketing and sales. Uh, um, page. And let's say you've got a 5% opt-in rate. Okay. You got a crazy low opt-in rate. Well, we know that there's an issue between the opt-in page, the traffic captivation page and the ad, right? If they're clicking on the ad, if you're targeting the right people, they're clicking on the ad, you're getting a reasonable click-through rate. We know that the idea and the way that you are expressing the idea is appealing to the market. And so it's not the idea, it's not the copy side. Now we need to look at congruence 
between the ad and the landing page. We need to look at congruence and we need to certainly look at the tech side of things. It's one of the things that I've talked about before in another video, uh, why you need to check your tech and why you need to make sure that on different browsers, on mobile, that it's displaying correctly, that it's working correctly, that what should be above the fold is above the fold, all of that stuff. Now, let's continue with this and go uh, uh, and, and, and say with this example that your opt-in rate is reasonable. Maybe you got a 20, 25% opt-in rate. So you're getting opt-ins and now people are going to your marketing and sales page. Maybe you've got a video sales letter on your marketing and sales page. Now let's just go on the assumption that you are, you're only generating that hundred bucks, right? We said you spent a thousand dollars, you only generated a hundred dollars back. Well, we need to know what is going on with that video sales letter, meaning you may immediately want to jump in and change the offer. You might want to change your price around. You might want to change your, uh, your, your offer around. But the reality is, is that until you dive in to the analytics of that video, you have no idea how many people are even seeing the offer. Right? What if 90% of your people are bailing in the lead, the first 350, 400, 500 words, right? 90%, meaning, right, 90% of the people are not even seeing the offer. So changing the offer, trying to improve the offer is insignificant in this context because the overwhelming majority of people are dropping off before they even see it. It would be the equivalent of you saying, hey, I need to fix the order form or I need to improve the upsell. You don't need to improve the upsell, right? The upsell, changing the upsell, fixing the upsell, adding in a new upsell, a different upsell may not be the issue until we dive in and we understand what is going on. Right now, if we see that the overwhelming majority of people are maybe 90% are seeing the offer and your, 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 uh, your conversion rate is low, well, then we know that we need to address the offer. Now, maybe 90% of the people are seeing the offer, just as an example, and they're going over to the order form, and then maybe you've got a 90% order form abandonment rate. See, so in that instance, right, changing the headline, changing the idea would be absurd. We're getting clicks. We're getting the engagement on the ad side. We're getting the opt-in. So we know that the idea, the expression of the idea is effective. We're getting the opt-ins. We're getting consumption of the video in this example. We're getting people to click over to the order form and then we're losing 90% on the order form. And so in that case, we need to address the, um, the order form. Now, maybe it's that also, let's look at this. Maybe it is that in this example of, I spent a thousand, I only made a hundred back. My campaign isn't working. Maybe it's that your sales conversion rate is great. Maybe you've got the clicks on the ads, you've got the opt-in rate where it needs to be, you've got the consumption of the, the video, you've got the volume of clicks over to your order form, you've got a great order form completion rate. Um, maybe you've got a, a sales conversion rate of 6% or 7% or 8%, something like that. But the issue is that your AOV is not even remotely close to your CPA, meaning what you're paying to get a buyer is far more than your AOV. Well, that tells us, right, that, we don't need to fix the headline. We don't need to fix the idea. We don't need to fix the lead. We don't need to tweak the argument. We don't need to tweak the offer. We don't need to tweak the order form. We need to fix your AOV. You see, all of this is to say that you need to understand what's going on with your campaign when it's not working in order to know what we need to do to fix it. And I'll tell you this right off the bat, okay? Right off the bat. You've heard me talk before about the, the beauty of an E5 campaign, how we've got a, a big marketing idea that introduces a new and different way for your prospect to experience the result that they want. You've heard me talk before about the lead and the job of the lead is to set that emotional hook, to get the prospect emotionally sold, right? We have to speak to the heart before we speak to the head. We have to get buy-in from the heart before we get buy-in from the head. The head always looks for justifications to support what the heart wants, right? And so that's the job of the lead. Then we've got to present a rock-solid, airtight, logical, and emotional argument proving why your unique mechanism is not only different from every other method, system, process, but that it is superior to every other method, system, process, for your prospect to experience the result that they want. And then we segue into 
the sin offer, right? Which is the fulfillment of the unique mechanism, which is how your prospect actually gets the unique mechanism that they now see as different and superior. Well, when a campaign is not working, it is always one of one or more of those elements that need to be fixed. Always. Either the idea is off the mark, the expression of the idea is off the mark, or you're getting clicks, you're getting attention, you're getting people to opt in, and then your abandonment rate on your VSL is like, it drops off right away. Why? Because you're not doing the lead properly. You're not setting the emotional hook first. You're trying to go right into a sales pitch or right into your marketing argument. You're trying to appeal logically to them, or you're just trying to talk about claims and benefits right away before you've set the emotional hook. It's always one of those elements, or maybe, right, you do that and then you bring them into a campaign argument that doesn't adequately prove why your solution is superior to every other. Your job is to make sure that you prove to your prospects why your mechanism, your method of delivering the result to them, the primary promise, is better than every other mechanism. Your prospects want the best they want the superior solution. They don't want the second best. They don't want an also ran solution. They don't want just more of the same. They want something different that is also superior when it comes to giving them the results that they want. And so maybe you just haven't proven, you don't have the right structure in place to prove that uh, your mechanism is superior. And then maybe you just don't have the right structure to your offer. You haven't addressed all the components, the seven components of the offer like I've talked about so many times before. It's always one of those pieces. The key is understanding what is missing. For more often than not, for most marketers, most entrepreneurs, they're missing many, if not most, if not all of those pieces, right? They really don't have a great idea. They've got a weak lead. If they got a lead, you know, like a, 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 at all that's really designed to... Uh, to set that emotional hook. They don't have any kind of argument. They've just got a bunch of claims and then they've got a an average mediocre um, offer. And so the reality is, and I hate to say it this way, right? But it's not surprising that, they're, that their campaign isn't working, right? Because they've got a, a frail uh, idea, right? They're not setting the emotional hook. They're not proving that they've got a different and superior mechanism. And then they're not making a great offer that makes it easier for the prospect to say yes, then no. Point is, that when you've got something that's not working, you got to diagnose why. And I would tell you to look at your campaign to diagnose why, as I just shared with you in this video, and compare it to the elements that, that need to be there, the elements that make up for an E5 campaign. It will always be one or more of those elements that is off the mark. Certainly, look, if you want my help, guidance, if you want to work on your E5 campaign together, uh, I would just tell you, go to learnfromtodd.com, schedule a call. You'll jump on the phone with a member of my team. These are not hardcore salespeople. These are folks that are, uh, they understand the E5 method. Most have been through the E5 training and they get it. And they'll be able to help you see how and where this fits into your business. And so again, you can do that with Learn From Todd. But please, if you've got a campaign that's not working, identify the source, right? And then match it up with what part of the E5 methodology is off the mark. And so with that, have an amazing day and I'll talk to you guys and gals soon.